as if 2020 couldn't get any weirder. Because now we suddenly have insect waifus? Hey Carfados, welcome back to the last set review of VBT-010 Phantom Dragon Aeon. We've already discussed the cards for Shadow Paddlin, Tachikaze as well as Spike Brothers. So if you're interested in any of those particular set reviews, then I highly recommend you guys to check out one of those videos right on top right there. But in today's video, we're going to tackle the last clan of that set, which is of course Mega Conley. And Mega Conley in introduces or reintroduces... Probably the most weirdest waifu of Vanguard, which is Gradora. And if you thought you could never waifu an insect, well, guess again, because that's actually the case here. But with that said, let's dive straight into these new cards, because not only is Gradora back in standard, they also bring in a brand new mechanic, which is called Cradle. But we will get to that once it's important for the set review itself. So of course we're going to start off with the reprints and Mega Colony has once again two critical reprints and both of them are going to get one star just because they're just generic reprints. Then on top of that they also got a new heal trigger in the likes of Large Snowflake Mutant Snow Trick. It's a one star because we already have a heal trigger. But it's another option if you like this one more. Then on top of that, they also got a new draw trigger in the likes of a Fluter Drafter. And this is going to be a free star as it's a new draw trigger in the mix of their draw trigger lineup. And the final new trigger that they've got is the Critical Sentinel trigger in the likes of Scissor Shot Mutant Bomb Scissor. And this is going to be a 5 star card as it's just like any other Critical Sentinel trigger. It opens up a lot of options in deck building. Now with the triggers, we have also of course have a new starter. And this time it's probably the original starter that should have been the case for gun and colio because we have young mutant warectus and this is going to be a one star because it's just a normal starter then a final throwaway card that we've got in this set is this grade 2 vanilla which is the 12k vanilla in the likes of hitting mutant horde jewel and this is going to be a one star because not only is it just a generic uh, vanilla, vanilla card that i do not really like but we already have access to a 12k vanilla within Mega Conley, so it has no actual purpose whatsoever. Then with that, we can finally go into the generic cards, which aren't really that many because we only have two. And one of those is this great free without a marker, which is Shredding Mutant Kill Trash. And its abilities act on Vanguard Circle, cost, counter plus two, and rest this unit... And your opponent cannot stand his or her rear guards during his or her next stand phase. Yeah, this is a uh, one star. Because not only does it cost two counter blasts to only stun your opponent's field and they cannot stand. That doesn't really do much. Because they can just call new units on top of them if they want to. So you're effectively already wasting two counter blasts. But on top of that, this needs to be your vanguard. Which doesn't have a protect marker. But the worst offense of this skill is the fact that you need to rest himself. So you are denying yourself the twin drive. So actuality, this cost is counter blast 2 and discard 2 cards. And you also won't have the advantageous effect of having drive checks. That's a huge loss for such a minor gain. Because once again, your opponent can just call new units to the field. So yeah, one star. Pretty bad. Then with that said, we go into the last generic support card because a lot of these cards are archetype restricted and a lot is all to do with the new Cradle mechanic. And that last generic support card is of course the Great Free Searcher in the likes of New Face Mutant Little Dorcas. And of course it has the Great Free Search effect, but its unique ability to gain 5k power is Continuous of Vegeta Rigor Circle. During your turn, if your opponent has no stand units, this unit gets power plus 5k. This is a pretty easy condition to fulfill because not only will your opponent probably attack whatever unit that they have. So even in the early game, when they call no rearguards, they attack with the vanguard. So it's pretty easy to fulfill. But on top of that, we have cards in Mega Colony that can rest your opponent's field. So it's a pretty decent skill nonetheless. So of course, it's a 5-star card, just like any of the other great free searchers. Now with that said, let's dive into the first couple of archetype support cards and we're going to start off with the machining cards and the first one of those cards is machining cybister and its abilities on a rigor circle when rest by your card's ability look at the free cards from the top of your deck call to one card with machining in its card name from among them to the rigor circle and put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order this ability may only be used by a card with the same card name once a turn so in a machining deck this is a really good plus engine because probably almost all your cards are going to be machining. So it's really easy to, to hit one of those cards in the top three. And there are a couple of cards within the machining archetype that 
will rest your units for cost. So overall, this is actually a pretty decent card within the machining archetype. And for that, I will give it a three star rating because it's a solid plus engine, but it's not a plus engine that also could give you potential cards in hand. It's they call them directly to the rigor circle, which can or cannot be a good thing here. Then the second machining card that we've got is this grade 2, Machining Scatterhorn. And its abilities are auto Vanguard the rigor circle. When placed from hand, look at the 6 cards from the top of your deck. Reveal the 1 card with machining in its card name other than a grade 2 among them. Put it into your hand and shuffle your deck. If you put a card into your hand, put a card from your hand into the soul. So this card allows you to fetch any grade 1 or grade 3 and potentially grade 0 machining cards. Which is actually pretty nice because it can fetch out any of your grade 3 right targets. It can get you the grade 1 we just discussed or other grade ones like machining hornet. Sadly, it cannot fetch itself or machining mantis which are pretty decent grade 2s. But nonetheless, it's a pretty decent effect. The fact that you also put something into the soul can actually synergize with your other cards within the engine. As there are cards that use utilize the soul a lot or you call soul cards outside of the soul like machining stack beetle or maybe you want to combine this with something like a end line that wants the soul that's great free so there are definitely some plays you can do around this skill but scatterhorn's second ability is act on vanguard the rearguard circle once per turn cost soul plus one and arrest a rearguard with machining in its card name choose one of your opponent's rearguards and that unit cannot stand during the opponent's next stand phase so it's a stun effect and its costs synergize with what this card does as well as the grid one we just discussed because it gives you soul and it uses soul for its skill so it is its own little engine within itself but if we rest the great one we just talked about we can even plus on top of that what we're already doing so that's actually a pretty nice interaction that we have with these cards that can be a really solid engine for machining overall but this card being able to plus you search at cards rest things stun your opponent as well as setting up your soul is a really good card for machining and i think i'm honestly giving this a five star rating because this helps the machining archetype to do a lot of things machining itself isn't going to be a strong deck but this grade two helps that archetype in so many different ways that it actually allows the archetype to even do something now the final machining card that we have is the great free machining card machining meteor bullet and its abilities are continuous event at the rearguard circle if you have five or more rearguards all of your rearguards with machining in their card names get boost so if you have a full field then those with machining get boost you don't have a full field of machinings but if you have a full field those with machining get boost okay that's actually pretty neat because a lot of machining cards are great freeze and it itself is once again a great free so allowing your great freeze to actually attain boost can be really nice and with the great two being able to search out great freeze in its search effect means that you can acquire those pieces to actually get value off of this skill but we also have a second effect on machining meteor bullet which is act on vanguard the rigor circle once per turn cost Rest one of your rearguards with machining in its card name, and this unit gets power plus 10k until the end of turn. So by resting one unit, you gain 10k. That's kind of okay, but the interesting thing about this is that it rests one of your rearguards, meaning you can activate that grade one once again with this effect. So you could therefore get not only 10k, but get another unit onto the board, which could potentially fulfill its continuous effect to give them every machining card boost. So there are definitely applications for this card, and it being once again a great free that can be a 22k attacker or booster could help the machining deck to acquire high columns as the archetype itself doesn't really generate a lot of power on units themselves but can generate power over multitudes of effects like we've seen with something like spark hercules for example so i think it's an all right decent card i think it's a three star card it might or not might not be played in the machining archetype but it gives the machining archetype some extra options to his disposal now with the machining cards out of the way there's one interesting card for the mill type of play stuff for mega colony as we've got this great free destruction spare mutant devo speed and dova speed has the ability although vanguard the rigor circle when placed cost counter plus one put two cards from the top of your opponent's deck into the drop zone and if a grade one or greater was put until the end of turn when your opponent would call cards from his or her hand to the guardian circle during the battle of this unit attack he or she must call two or more units at the same time so the fact that it mills two is actually quite impactful because so far most of the mill cards only mill one so this is actually double the mill value and because you mill two and only one of those grade one or greater needs to fulfill the condition means that it's very likely that you will always hit like there is a small chance that you mill two triggers but if you mill two triggers that can actually be very decent but the payout that it gets the battle door effect 
is kind of irrelevant for that meta. It's not really that great. So with that in mind, I can only give it actually two stars because as a great free unit, I don't think it's any better than what the uh, the mill deck already has with Gunning Kodio. It's probably not better than Cyclone Matuf. So for that, it's definitely only a two star for me. Now with those cards out of the way, we're going to dive into the new archetype or new playstyle for mega colony which works around this new cradle marker so before we go into these cards let exp let's explain what these cradle markers are cradle markers are a new type of marker that some cards within mega colony can create and once you create a marker you put that marker on one of your opponent's units units that have the cradle marker on top of them will lose their original abilities will get their power reduced by their original power and they cannot boost or intercept. So what that means is that any skill that's printed on the cards themselves, any actual power number printed on the cards will get removed. So for example, if a unit is a 12k base, then it goes to zero power. But if it gets extra power via some skill from another unit, then it will then still gain that power because it doesn't remove all the power. Same as with skills. Their original skills are removed, but let's say for example, another unit gives that unit an extra skill, that skill will stay on the card. But things like boost and intercept, that's just out of the picture. So even if a card attains boost or intercept, they cannot do that because the marker will prohibit them from performing that action. So effectively, it makes those cards into vanilla units with zero power and in some cases they might get a skill and might get a little power the best example is that is of course with force markers the power of the force markers will stay on those cradle markers so you can still swing with them for a decent amount of power if you play a force deck now there is a secondary effect to these cradle markers because if the cradle marker is retired and that of course refers to if the unit with the cradle marker is retired the owner of that marker aka the mega colony player that created it can then search their deck for a card with the same grade as the unit that had the cradle marker so let's say for example a mega colony player puts a cradle marker on a grade one then if that grade one gets retired the mega colony player can then search his deck for any grade one and adds it to hand so not only are you basically making a unit ineffective for the rest of the game, if that unit gets retired, then you get also a plus engine in your hand. And that can also be a search engine because you can select your cradle markers to be either on a grade three, if you need a grade three, put it on a grade two, if you need a grade two, put on a grade one, if you need a grade one, or put on a grade zero, if you need a grade zero. So this mechanic has actually two layers to it, which is actually a pretty interesting overall mechanic in its own right but the important thing here is that it only activates if those units get retired if they disappear from the field via any other way then that effect won't activate so if that unit with the cranial marker is put into the soul or it's bounced back to hand or it is bound or whatever it happens without putting it in the drop zone then that cradle marker will disappear but the Mega Colony player will not get that search off. So that's an important thing you need to keep in mind when assessing the situation with Cradle Markers. So with that explanation done, let's dive into the different Mega Colony cards that actually make Cradle Markers and interact with Cradle Markers. And we start off with a bridge situation as this Grid 1 can create Cradles, but it also works with the mill mechanic because we have this Grid 1 Turbulent Signal and his abilities act on Rearguard Circle, cost, count plus one, and retire this unit. Put the top card of your opponent's deck into the drop zone, choose one of your opponent's rearguards without any cradle marker for each grade of that card, and put a cradle marker on it. So this can give you a lot of cradle markers, but at the same time, it's actually really RNG and might not even come up all that often because it can be the case that for some reason you're lucky and you mill a grade 3 but if your opponent only has one unit onto the field or only one unit without a cradle marker then this doesn't really do anything and the fact that it needs to retire itself is actually quite expensive with, with the fact that you do not even know if you're actually going to acquire cradle markers so with that in mind I can only actually give it two stars for as it isn't really that consistent in what you're going to get it can be a nice addition to the gun and Colio mill strategy as it allows the mill strategy to also acquire some markers itself but I don't think this is a good card for the marker focus playstyle itself as they want to have consistent access to the amount of cradle markers they need to do their place then another great one for the cradle marker mechanic is cleared breeze and she has the ability auto vanguard to rear circle when placed discard a card from your hand draw a card 
And if you discard the Great Free for this cost, choose one of your opponent's rearguards without any cradle marker and put a cradle marker on it. So this is basically a cycle card which has the potential of also creating a cradle marker. This is actually a pretty good card and I would give it four stars because not only is it a cycle card which can help you do anything for your place, which is always pretty nice, but Mega Colony has abundance of Great Freeze and ways to get to their Great Freeze. So being able to discard just a Great Free to also create a marker is actually pretty nice. And with the new Cradle mechanic around that you can potentially target your opponent's Great Freeze to even search out more Great Freeze for such a skill as this, makes it even better. So therefore it's a really solid Great 1 in my opinion. Now if we go to the Great 2 version, we have this Great 2, Melody Mutant Nel Nifia. And Nel Nifia's ability is continuous effect at the rearguard circle. During a turn, if a Cradle marker is on your opponent's rearguard, this unit gets power plus 6k. So it's can so it basically becomes a 15k beater, which is pretty not, pretty okay. Then her second effect is auto. When retired from rearguard circle by your card's ability, cost soul plus one, choose one of your opponent's rear guards without any cradle marker, put it put a cradle marker on it. So if this card gets retired. For a soul blast, you can then also create a marker. Now, this might sound weird because Mega Kali doesn't really retire its own skills, but Gridora allows you to retire one of your units for a cost of her skill. So by paying the cost of Gridora's effect and you target this, you get some extra bonus effect on top of that, which is actually pretty decent, which is, allows you to create even more credit markers on the go. And for one soul blast to disable one of your opponent's units, which can potentially be a search into another card, it's actually pretty good value. And it being a 15k attacker means that you can at least put some pressure on your opponent in the early game as it can potentially hit over 10k force numbers if they are calling units in the early game. So for that I think it's a solid 3 star card. It isn't as easy to fulfill like the grade 1 as it needs to be retired by your effect but in the overall grand scheme of things of the Gridora deck it's actually a pretty decent card. Then speaking of uh, dark faces let's take a look at the supporting dark face as, we, as we've got this grade 3 intimidating mutant dark face. And its ability is auto at the rearguard circle. When placed, cause discard a card from your hand, choose one of your opponent's rearguards without any cradle marker, and put a cradle marker on it. So it's similar to the grid one, only in this case, it's not really a cycle, it's discard the cradle marker, but you don't get the draw off, but you don't have to discard specifically a great free to get it. It's decent, as seen as cradle markers themselves could potentially result into a new card in hand. So that could be a wash in itself. Then its second effect is auto vanguard the rearguard circle when it attacks the vanguard cost counter plus one choose one of your opponent's rearguards with cradle marker on it retire it and this unit gets power plus 5k until the end of the battle for each grade of that chosen unit so in most cases to acquire the potential draw of the cradle marker we need to wait on our opponent's action as they probably need to call new units on top of those units to retire them from the field that might not always happen as your opponent can just leave those units onto the field if they do not want to give you that draw. With Dark Face, we can forcefully get those draws if we want to have a specific unit into our hand for a specific play or for a defensive option, then that could actually be really good. Because we can play Grade 1 Perfect Guards and our opponent is definitely going to play Grade 1s. So if they have a Grade 1 with a Cradle Mark on it, we probably want to pop that Grade 1 to search at a PG and add it to our hand for probably being able to guard the, f the next turn. So having a skill like this is actually really important. And being able to even acquire some extra power on top of that is actually pretty good. So with it in mind being really easy to create markers as well as killing units with markers and acquiring some extra value on top of that, Allows me to get this card a solid 4 star card as it works really well with the engine and it can make the deck be a bit more proactive than the more inherent stally like nature of these cradle markers. Then with that said we've got a couple of cards that interact with cradle markers themselves without actually creating cradle markers and one such a card is this grade 1 crack arm crusher and its effect is continuous on rearguard circle. This unit can attack a back row unit with a cradle marker on it. It's kind of whatever as it's not that great to to direct one of your free attacks into a back row unit. Uh, it allows you to potentially get that retire off so you could fetch them out. It can also be utilized in the early game if your opponent gets a defensive trigger to still be able to swing at one of their units. So there is some potential in it, but it's not great. So for that, I will only give it two stars as it's very limited. And even the value that you get out of it is 
probably not that amazing. Then we have another great one which is synergized with markers, and that is Disturbance Mutant Morsi Roho. And Morsi Roho has the ability Act on Rearguard Circle, Cost, Retire this unit, choose one of your opponent's rearguards with Cradle Marker on it, retire it, call up to one card with the same grade as that unit from your deck to the rearguard circle, and shuffle your deck. This ability may only be used by a card with the same card name once a turn. So just like Dark Face, this card allows us to proactively use those markers to gain value. But interesting enough, this card doubles the value of that marker because if we pop a grade 1, we not only can superior call a grade 1 to the field, we can even fetch a grade 1 from our deck into our hand. Same as with grade 2s, same as with grade 3s. So we have even more control on top of what we're going to do. And that's actually pretty decent for the retire of this card, because not only do we retire a potential card from our opponent's field, we get two cards in our card pool, because one goes to the hand and one goes to the field. So that actually gives us a lot of options. So I think it's a solid free star card. It does require you to build cradle markers and then utilize this card. But the fact that it has some potential to actually give a lot of advantage to our plays, and it also fins the deck quite significantly as we fin the deck with two cards out of nowhere without paying counterless or soul bless, can actually be pretty damn good. So that's why I think it's a solid free star card in the combination of what we've seen so far with Cradle Markers. Then another interesting card that we have for Mega Colony is this grade 2, which is Beheading Mutant Crimson Cutter. And they were so close. They were so close in creating something amazing for Mega Conley, yet they were so far. Because its skill is Auto Guardian Circle. When placed, costs Soul Bless 1, still sounding good. Choose one of your opponent's rear guards with a Cradle Marker. And this unit gets the shield of that unit until the end of the battle. They were so close in creating a card that allows you to create markers during your opponent's turn. If this card just stated, Soul Bless 1, choose one of your opponent's units without a Cradle Marker and put a Cradle Marker on it, that would be amazing. Sadly, that's not the case. That said, it's not completely terrible, because this thing can be a giant shield unit, as you can call it from hand, it can copy a potential trigger unit or a grade 1 and it requires the extra 10k shield or extra 5 or 15 or whatever, and it can be a decent shield option. But... Overall, it's not that great. It requires a lot of things, and therefore I can only give it one star. I, it could have been so much more, but sadly, that was not the case. Now we have one more supporting card for the Dark Face uh, engine, as well as the um, Cradle Marker engine, as we've got this grade 2, the Spoiling Mutant Sticky Bolas. And Sticky Bolas has the abilities auto Invigor the Rigged Circle. When placed, cost Counter Blast 1, Look at six cards from the top of your deck, reveal the total of two cards with Dark Face in their different card names from among them, and put them into your hand to shuffle your deck. So this card can potentially fetch out the normal Dark Face as well as Dark Face Ghidorah, which are both really important cards for the whole Cradle mechanic. And that is pretty good as it's a counter plus one for a potential plus two. I say potential, as it's definitely not consistent in getting both of them in your top six. But the main power comes in our second ability, which is Auto Rigor Circle. When it attacks, costs Soul Blast 1, and this unit gets power plus 6k until the end of the battle for each of your opponent's rearguards with a Cradle Marker. If this unit's power is 20k or greater, draw a card. So basically, if your opponent has two Cradle Markers, this unit gets plus 12k power, so that means it becomes 21. So that means for Soul Blast 1, it turns into a 20k unit, and you get to draw. That's good value. That's really good value as it allows you to get a really good draw engine in this new Mega Conley deck as it allows you to be very defensive as well as that whole cradle mechanic that puts your units, puts your opponent's units as nothing and potentially gets you even more consistent search effects from your deck. So with the Dark Face search skill, on top of the big power play that that card can have as well as it being a solid rearguard unit, Makes me to give this card a solid 5 star card. This is definitely a 4 off staple card for the current Gradora deck. And you probably do not want to run a deck without this Sticky Bolas. Now that we've seen all the Cradle cards. And even the supporting Dark Face and the Sticky Bolas. Let's take a look at the Queen herself. The brand new VR for Mega Conley. Which is of course Evil Governor Dark Face Gradora. And her abilities are Act on Vanguard Circle. Once per turn costs... Counter plus one, choose two of your opponent's rearguards without any cradle markers and put a cradle marker on each of them. This is the strongest cradle marker creation that we've seen so far. Just counter plus one, 
and two cradle markers are right on the field. This is probably your main cradle marker creator and the rest of the cards are just some extra cards around that mechanic. That's why that cycle card, for example, is really good because you don't necessarily have to play it as a grade one card that creates cradle markers, but probably more on the cycle engine that could potentially give you that extra marker if you need so. And that goes for every single card within the cradle mechanic that we have right now. But that's just one thing that Gordora does, because the main fun lies in her second ability, which is Auto Vanguard Circle. When it attacks, cost, retire a rearguard, search your deck for up to one grade free, call to the rearguard circle, and shuffle your deck. If you called, that unit and this unit gets power plus 10k until the end of turn. So this is a skill that I was hinting towards with the other grade 2 that needs to be retired by your effect. You can pay it as a cost for this skill to then also create another marker on top of that. But the more important thing here is that this skill allows you to acquire 4 attacks in this particular deck. Because you have one column you attack, you have your other column that attacked, you attack with the Vanguard, use a skill to call another grade 3 and that can attack then afterwards. And that unit and this unit gets an extra 10k. So that means your Ghidorah will be a 22k base power. Which is pretty damn good. But if we look at the Great Freeze, then things are actually starting to get really interesting. Because one of those targets can of course be Darkface himself. And Darkface has an unplaced effect that can be deactivated, that creates another marker, and that can also retire that marker if it attacks to gain to gain even more power and to gain more card advantage while you do everything. So then you can see that all these effects suddenly intertwine to create marker on marker on marker on cradle marker on cradle marker on cradle marker. Because Darkface Ghidorah can create two cradle markers. Then you attack with your stuff. Then you activate Ghidorah's effect. You retire that grade 2. That then creates a marker. You superior call the Darkface grade 3. That then creates a marker. And you can see how then suddenly out of nowhere... You have an entire board that's filled with cradle markers. But we can even be more annoying against our opponent and also be more aggressive because instead of superior calling something like the supporting uh, dark face, we can superior call a common grade free from the first set for Mega Colony, which is Hell Demise. Because Hell Demise, unplaced, allows us to rest one of our opponent's units, but that's not the important part here. Once it plays, it also allows to restand one of our units. So what that means is that if we attack with one unit, then we attack with the other column, and then we attack with Ghidorah and use her effect to retire one unit and call the Hell Demise, we can then activate the Hell Demise to restand the other column and have two standing units again, so we can attack two more times. So suddenly we have a deck that can attack five times, and suddenly you can see the devastating power that Gridora possesses because on the surface it might not sound that great because you're just shutting down your opponent's unit in effectiveness but what actually does that acquire you in your battle plan and now that we've seen all the pieces then suddenly it clicks as we can easily swarm the amount of cradle markers we can create for low cost but on top of that we can multi-tech acquire a lot of draw power as well as acquiring a lot of numbers on our columns themselves and because our opponent has those cradle markers on their units means that if they want to put a dent in our defensive hand that we just acquired with all our draw skills means that they probably need to call new units on top of that and that will just further our plans ahead so Gradora is definitely in my opinion a solid five star card that can be a really good control deck for mega colony which could be very devastating in the future if Bougiros builds upon this cradle mechanic, which I secretly hope they will do. And But with that said, that basically concludes this set review for Mega Colony. As we've seen, we've seen a lot of interesting cards. We see some new support cards for the machining archetype, as well as at least one throwaway card for the mill mechanic. But the main bulk of this whole new set wave is, of course, for this brand new mechanic that is the cradle markers themselves. And honestly, it's a very interesting approach to this stun stalling annoying playstyle that we know from Mega Conley but this time in a little bit different fashion than we're used to and I think it's a really interesting way to approach that type of game plan and who knows could actually be a really really solid deck once we see this in action and once we get maybe even more support in the future but with that said let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of these new cards for mega conley are you excited for these new cards that we've seen so far do you think that gradora is an amazing deck that has a lot of potential as a control deck or do you think that they are missing still some key pieces right here and there and we need more support in the future or were you more a fan of the gun and colio mill mechanic or the machining deck and you were hoping for more 
more support for that or you maybe think the support is amazing for what it is let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below this video has been brought to you by lovely patrons over at patreon.com slash finger insider you guys are amazing if you do want to support the channel or everything that's happening on the channel, you can simply go to patreon.com slash insider and become a Patreon today. But with that said, I'm Mr. Timeleap and I'll see you guys in the next one.